everyone that's joined us. Uh, my name is Joe from PenPal Schools. Thanks for joining to hear and learn today about uh, using global connections for authentic language learning. Um, really a pleasure to have you here um, with me today to help to lead this conversation. We've got two uh, wonderful educators and a third on the way. Uh, so with us now, we've got um, Flavia. Oh, oh, we've got all three. So perfect timing. Hi, Hannah. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. And, and Miguel as well. I see you guys. Um, Thanks for joining us. Uh, something happened, I can't hear you now. <laughs> um, well, Hannah, can you hear me OK? Miguel, how about you? Can you hear me OK? Yeah, I can hear you very well. OK, mm -hmm. perfect. So uh, Miguel and uh, Flavia uh, coming in from, um, from Venezuela and from mm -hmm. Uruguay, respectively. And then Anna Dudic, who you saw briefly, uh, from the Ukraine is helping to to lead us as well. Um, so let's see, here she is dialing back in. Anna, yeah. how about this time? Can you hear us okay? Yeah, no, it's fine. Wonderful. Well, I'm so uh, grateful to all of you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, here today, the topic is one that I know you guys are all very well qualified to speak on, which is using global connections to help with English learning, right? To boost authenticity, to make students more motivated and more excited to learn English. All of you are working with students who, uh, for whom English is not uh, their primary language and, and you've benefited from bringing some global connections uh, to those students to help them practice their English. So um, why don't we jump right in? We've got an audience of people uh, really focused and interested in learning on English. Um, the we have a, our first question in our Twitter chat and this will be a great opportunity for, for um, you to all int to introduce yourselves as well. Um, and I've got just a few uh, materials to share on that Twitter chat. So let me um, share my screen. Let's see. Uh, where do I share my screen? Liz, can you help me figure this out real quick? Where's the screen share? Oh, here it is. It's over on the left. Got it. I just had my screen off too far to the side. All right. So I'm going to share my screen, and we've got a Twitter chat so that people can can weigh in um, and and ask questions. Here we go. So here again, uh, we, we covered our speaker. So we've got Flavia from Uruguay, Anna from uh, Anna Dudic from Ukraine, and Miguel from Venezuela. Um, wonderful educators. Uh, who you'll have a chance to hear from in a moment. They can tell you all about uh, the great work that they're doing. Um, we want to hear from you. So we've got a live Twitter chat going for this event. Um, follow Pen Pal Schools, and we have the hashtag English Connections. Use that in your responses to the Twitter chat. So please jump in, ask some questions from our, our wonderful panelists here. Um, every one of our panelists, Miguel and Anna and Flavia, they are all Pen Pal Schools Global Ambassadors. So you can see their pictures on this map somewhere. They are part of our community, helping to connect their students through authentic uh, English language learning practice with peers in over 150 countries. Um, we hope that many of you listening today will join our community, connect with their classrooms, as well as many others around the world um, for project-based learning, letting students practice English through authentic connections where they'll be learning about everything from immigration to fake news to music, uh, the environmental issues, poetry, and you'll hear from our panelists today who have, who have participated in, in some of these programs. Um, we're offering a discount to all schools that participate in this webinar. So if you're there following along, you can check out this link, penpalschools.com slash English. This is just for webinar attendees. You're going to get a great discount to come and join and be a part of our community. Um, so without further ado, let's let's get into the Twitter chat um, and, and hear from our awesome panelists and their experience. Um, question number one, remember we've got the hashtag English Connections for on Twitter. Question one, what impact have global connections had on your instruction and your students' English language skills? So this is one uh, I'd love for each of you to answer. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to pause and, and hand it over to the group. Um, and. Uh, is there someone that wants to, to jump in first on this and answer this question, talking about the impact that global connections 
have had um, on your students' English language skills and on your instruction? I know each of you are certainly well qualified to, to field this question. Okay, I might start if you don't mind. Yes, yeah. please. And please, Anna, introduce yourself so everyone can learn what a wonderful educator and the amazing work that you're doing over in Ukraine. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Hanna, and uh, I am a teacher of English in Ukraine, in the very center of Ukraine, in the city called Kropivnitsky. I have been teaching English for 25, 21 years already, uh, and I really enjoy this because uh, kids are really fantastic. And uh, at the end of every school year, when you get to see their progress, what they have learned during the school year, uh, this is the most amazing time. And uh, as a teacher of English, I have been looking for a long time for a platform that can provide authentic um, ways of communication for my kids. Uh, because here in Ukraine, we mostly uh, teach in a rather homogeneous society where the majority of kids are Ukrainian and in the classroom they do not have a possibility to speak English as a uh, foreign language or second language naturally. So uh, we had to invent some situations, you know, like to practice role plays or dialogues or whatever. But this was not natural. And when I found Pentel Schools, I saw that uh, this platform gave me practically everything I was looking for. Um, the text, which uh, helped kids to practice reading, uh, listening material uh, really adopted to uh, school children because it has got different levels, like for beginners, intermediate students, and advanced students. Uh, really interesting topics for discussion, which uh, touch practically every issue which are connected with global goals, which are connected with uh, uh, really urgent, up-to-date issues which kids love discussing. And uh, uh, it also gives us a possibility to practice writing while communicating with pen pals from different uh, countries, from different parts of the world. And uh, here on the screen, you can see some responses of the kids who took part in the project called Immigration in the 21st Century. And this project was completed by our students during summer school last year. And it had such a great impact on uh, them as individuals and also, of course, on their uh, skills like uh, English skills, reading, writing, uh, speaking and uh, listening skills, they improved a lot. But what is more, uh, kids became more uh, sure of themselves. They understood that they can communicate with uh, foreigners using English as means of communication. Uh, that uh, they stopped being afraid of uh, making mistakes, for example, while speaking or writing. Because uh, the most important idea was to convey your thoughts, to convey your ideas, to share your ideas with others. And uh, that was probably the best moment in the project when students told me that after exchanging ideas in the chat box with their pen pals from different countries, they found out that they had similar ideas that they had a lot in common, though they lived lots of lots of miles away from each other. And that was really great because here uh, the language and technology provided by Pentel schools kind of reached this uh, to communicate freely. So that was probably my experience. And as a teacher, I was really happy that I could provide my kids with an opportunity to practice English in the natural uh, way, in the natural surrounding, to uh, exchange thoughts and ideas. Well, thank you so much, for Hannah, for, for sharing that. Uh, really cool to see your students getting that opportunity to improve their English and also have just a personal meaningful conversation about, about the topic of immigration. I was looking there. I saw also some work from your students um, where they were uh, learning about the environment and environmental issues. You've done quite a few different topics at this point. Um, what, are, what are some of the others you've done in addition to immigration the other topics that your students have had a chance to, to discuss on the uh,
well, my students also had a chance to uh, speak about, uh, to communicate with uh, international panels about the topic of uh, environment, which was really important for them. And uh, the idea which struck me most and the idea that uh, students were uh, impressed with themselves, they thought that uh, before joining the project uh, about ecology, they were like uh, most kids. They did not treat this topic seriously. Uh, they heard it in the news. They read some articles about problems of ecology, but they did not think that uh, practically every child, every person can do something to protect the environment. But after the uh, project, after exchanging ideas with uh, their panels, they understood that this uh, question was important practically for everybody, uh, no matter what country they lived in and uh, that uh, there are some little things uh, which every person can do some everyday issues you know like everyday points which you can do if you really want to uh, help the environment and uh, uh, one of our students got into uh, became a uh, panel star uh, the uh, panel of the month uh, the, the girl who was participating in one of such projects and actually uh, becoming a panel star uh, was a really great experience for her because uh, it mm, motivated her to be uh, not only a good student academically, but to become uh, an activist uh, in uh, her school community. So she became more active in uh, self-government in schools. She became a more active uh, uh, participant of different uh, uh, student uh, groups and uh, uh, activist groups. So she started kind of believing in herself. So that was really great. That's fantastic. That's that's so amazing to hear. And we're, we're so proud of uh, our, our pen pal stars and, and grateful for them because not only are they learning for themselves, but they're, I'm sure, with the work that she's doing, with what she's sharing in our community, um, she's helping others to learn as well. She's helping others to care more about the environment and, and, and these issues. So. We're certainly uh, very grateful and, and proud of, of her and all of your students for participating in these topics. And um, you'll be happy to see some of the things that we're building for next year to really amplify student voice even more. You know, students are are the, the, the ones that deserve to be recognized and celebrated and give them a, a megaphone for for what they're learning and and um, and how we can Im improve our world for, for them, uh, led by them. So we've got some wonderful features that we're cooking up for next school year uh, for to really amplify that to get students creating more, not just in the in the reading and writing, but creating more interesting projects. So um, you can look forward to that. Um, Miguel, why don't we we pass it over to you? I, I'm I'm really interested to hear. Uh, it's been a, a while since we last connected. Um, how things are going, and and you know what global connections have looked like for you and your students, and and some of the experiences that you can share. All right. Well, I'm uh, Miguel Torres, and I'm from Venezuela. I'm a teacher of English. I have been teaching English for over ten years now, and um, I have taught the students. Um, since they are three years old up until any age. And I have been trying to spread the word about Penpal schools like locally, nationally, and also internationally, once at Tissot International Convention. And uh, I mean, this experience has been amazing. I mean, um, it has motivated me even more to, to keep on teaching English uh, because I see, uh, I see my students motivated. And when there is motivation, there is learning. Um, you know, and many of my students tend to see Penpal schools as, a, as an extracurricular activity. And even though there is academic content to learn, I mean, there is reading, there is, a, a, you know, critical thinking, uh, watching videos and writing summaries, perhaps, um, they don't see it as a, as a lesson, per se. I mean, they see it as something fun and they see that at the end of it, they're going to be communicating with somebody else from around the world, which that maybe they are not used to, and they're going to be using real English. I mean, with a specific purpose. Um, I will also have to say that I mean, I have been working with different projects with my students, uh, mainly in English, but I have also used some projects in Spanish for those of uh, young learners who have still not mastered uh, uh, English uh, language skills very well. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have been working on a special one that we worked on was on immigration. Um, 
and it was a very uh, appropriate topic because of our current social, political, and economic situation we're having here in Venezuela. It, it, I mean, they got really into that because at least somebody uh, in the group had someone emigrating uh, somewhere else. So it was a sensitive thing, and you, you also allow them to, you know, culturally connect with uh, students around the world that were, were going through the same uh, kind of process. Um, so I think that, I mean, they have not only benefited by improving or enriching their language skills, but also they have become more culturally aware, you know, that there is a there are more countries outside Venezuela. I mean, there are many more points of views uh, apart from the ones that they already have. And yeah, I mean, every single student when I when I uh, come across uh, the school, they they keep on asking me, when do we have pimples again? When is the next project? So it's it's really nice to see them uh, really eager to learn. Um, so yeah, it has been a really amazing experience. Awesome. Yeah, we're we're so happy to hear that. You know if. If students feel like it's fun and it stops being homework, it's amazing uh, how much learning can happen when they don't even realize it. Um, I mean, it looks like, judging from these photos, you're doing an amazing job of making it fun and mixing in some offline work in addition to, to what's going on online. So I see, uh, you know, getting out and using the whiteboard, sticky notes, uh, some hand handwritten exercises for students. So. Um, ways for students to, to kind of take what they're learning online with their pen pals and bring that back into the classroom. Um, I, we've got, uh, I'm guessing these are student responses that we're reading here uh, about uh, immigration and what it means to them. That is correct. So what I tend to do, depending on the topic and uh, on the level of the students, is to discuss it with them in the classroom and get them to think about it so they can uh, you know, write or even record videos because I have also had them record videos to share with uh, with some of the students on their point of view. So I want them to, uh, and, and they usually, uh, it's not just me trying to correct them, but since they know somebody else is going to read or watch what, what they do, they try their best to write grammatically correct sentences and they also try to make sure that it's culturally correct. I also try to guide them on what to say, what not to say, uh, uh, and the use of words. So I do plenty of off offline work before they go online and, and do the forum or do the reflection part. Yeah, I mean, just reading through these responses, they're, they're pretty impressive, uh, you know, in terms of the, the degree of difficulty of what's being expressed here in the vocabulary. So is this... Um, is this, are these some of your most advanced students that are, that are able to do this or is this a product of, you know, students working harder because they have that authentic audience for their work and really taking a lot of time and effort to write these sentences or, or, or a bit of both? Well, these are, these students, I mean, I usually have mixed ability students in these groups of uh, pimples and these usually have been learning English for a year or two years. So, um, I mean, all of you see there is their work. I try not to influence them so much uh, or correct them that much on what they do. So it, it is more natural uh, when they're transmitting their messages. So wow. yeah, it's a bit of both. I mean, we have basic students, but we also have students who have been learning English for over two years, writing the responses there. That's that's impressive for, for one or two years of English. Those responses are, are, are pretty impressive, uh, using some great vocabulary and using it well. So um, awesome job, and, and, and thank you so much for sharing that, and, and glad to hear that the students are, are having fun and, 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 and that you're sneaking the learning in there. They don't even realize what's going on. So, um, really cool to hear. Um, let's, let's keep it uh, down in, in South America. Let's pass over to Flavia um, from, from Uruguay. Flavia is a wonderful ambassador. She has been sharing pen pal schools just uh, so much uh, throughout Uruguay. So you are really a, a model ambassador for us. Also recently got to take a trip up here to Austin, Texas to visit the pen pal schools headquarters. Look, Flavia, we still got your Uruguay flag hanging there. So you're, you're still in our, in our thoughts and um, we look forward to you joining us again. Um, I had muted you earlier because there was a little feedback on your microphone, and now I'm trying to figure out how to unmute you. Um, 
Do you, can you unmute yourself perhaps? Maybe you need to be the one that does it. Are you able to hear us now? Yes, perfect, loud and clear. Thank you so much for joining us, Flavia. And and, and who's with you? I'm, I'm interested to learn your, your companion here, please. Uh, you, you can introduce yourself. Um, hi, my name is Nora Sullivan. Um, I'm a Fulbright English teaching assistant. So I traveled from the US um, to come here to Uruguay to be a part of Flavia's classroom um, and in several other classes. Um, so my role here is also explicitly to be a cultural ambassador. So not only to be um, an English language teacher, um, but to bring the perspective of American culture into an English language classroom okay. and to function as a native speaker. Wonderful. Well, thanks for joining us today. And, and you're lucky to be able to uh, to work with Flavia. She's, I, I can't say enough good things. Um, Flavia, you, you've got so many experiences to share, and I've been fortunate enough to actually speak with some of your students directly, which has been a rare treat. A rare treat. So I don't even know where to begin, uh, but hopefully you do. We've got some slides for you as well, um, but would love to hear about your experiences and, and those of your students. Mm -hmm. Okay, I work in, in different institutions. I work, uh, I have the chance to work in a public school. This is my lab code. It's part of my uniform. And I also work in institutes and in high schools and what, what you call middle schools are high schools in Uruguay. So I, I work in different scenarios with adults, with adolescents and with elementary school kids. And uh, I have the privilege to work with Nora. So this year we are making things happen in this, in this school. We feel we are advancing a lot in, in, in a lot of things we are implementing. But one, if I have to choose between all the things I have uh, tried to improve my teaching um, experience, my approach, it is definitely Penpal Schools what has uh, made a change, a drastic change. Uh, it was a turning point in my, uh, in my approach. Um, the fact that we are, uh, the fact of being um, teachers of English as a foreign language gives us uh, uh, the chance to teach any content, uh, any content, right? Any subject matter is, is part of our instruction. So we are very lucky and whatever our students want to say, want to communicate, uh, we are there and it's useful for us. We have the chance to make learning meaningful um, because we can approach every, every subject matter. And um, the fact of um, using global connections, uh, I think we are not successful if our students are very fluent in English, but they are not aware of the, the reality and what goes on locally, nationally, and around the world. And uh, even when we, we think of little kids and we, we, we can think that they are not ready for certain uh, um, like higher, yeah, yeah. Uh, they get really involved in, in what goes on. We, we talk about the role of women in the world. Uh, we are affected by immigration. We, we live it ourselves and they, they don't know what, it, what is really happening, why this is happening. And all the projects that are there are ready to go. And, we, um, and it's, it's a great tool, a great tool to, to help us uh, develop better uh, classes. And this year we are working. I, I, would, I never thought of teaching poetry <laughs> in my cl English class. Uh, and uh, since Nora is very into, interested in poetry, we implement. We are using a word of poetry, one of the, the projects on Pampa schools. And it, um, it's amazing to see how students develop independence. They develop empathy. They start to collaborate, and it really happens. They communicate. They need the language for meaningful situations, and everything is, is available thanks to, to these projects. They started to learn what kind of poems uh, exist, uh, how a poem can tell something about the culture of the writer, uh, something about the, the, probably the background, what happened to his life. Uh, before writing that poem, and they, it triggered the, the interest in writing poems, and we are going to work on um, organizing a, a book, designing poems, and uh, Nora was surprised to see also how students uh, were really into, into writing, into communicating, they, they become independent learners, and uh, I think that's uh, what makes us feel successful. 
when they communicate things that are, that, that are spontaneous, that, that they want to say, when the use of English makes sense, and when they become more global citizens, uh, thinking uh, critically, trying to collaborate, uh, developing empathy. I've been trying a lot of projects because uh, every year I feel that every group of students uh, have different interests. Uh, oh, we have, I'm sorry. We are in, I'm sorry, Joe, there's a lot because we are in school. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect. This is great. <laughs> Hi. Yes, we are in school. Hola. So I think we might need to move. No, sorry, no problem. No problem. Thanks, thanks so much. Yeah, we've got a little chaos there in the middle of the school day. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> okay, I'm going to. I moved somewhere else. Okay, perfect. perfect. And I'll mute you in the in the time being. All right. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh man, muted, muted a moment too soon. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen when you connect. Uh, you know, during the school day. So that was awesome. Um, they refuse to be muted. Hola. <laughs> oh man, that was perfect. Um, so yeah, so one of the things that, and hopefully Flavia will be able to join us again soon, but I love to hear talking about uh, curiosity in students and how, you know, what started talking about poems just branched out in other directions. They started to learn about who are these poets? What are the backgrounds of these poets? I want to learn more about the place that these people are from. And of course, the pen pals in, in that, those places. And so we heard Flavia talking about the students developing as you know more individual self-directed learners. We heard her talking about developing empathy and wanting to learn and understand the people in these places and, and what shaped these poets. So um, I really enjoyed hearing that. I hope that she'll be able to, to join back in and we can talk more about that. Um, but let's now move on to our next question in the Twitter chat. Let me just share my screen again so we can read along. All right, I'm getting better at that. There we go. Um, so the next question in the Twitter chat is question number two. What tools and resources do you use to connect and practice English with native speakers? So again, uh, for everyone following along on Twitter, please um, write in your answer with the hashtag English Connections. And then I'll, now let's go back to you, uh, to Miguel and to, to Hannah and perhaps Flavia if she rejoins us. Mm -hmm. um, we've already learned about how you're using Pen Pal Schools, um, but you know, Pen Pal Schools is far from the only resource out there to, uh, to help students learn English in a more authentic and motivating way. So are there, are there other tools and resources that you'd recommend for those following along in addition to Pen Pal Schools um, that really have, have been helpful to help your students not just to learn the English, but to motivate them and get them excited about it? Yeah, I can uh, just jump in here. And uh, uh, as for me and for my students, I found out that uh, one of the resources which they really love is Skype. Uh, and uh, the game which they really enjoy playing is called Mystery Skype. You know, when teachers know uh, which country they are uh, partners come from partner class but the kids do not know that and uh they see for the first time they are skype partners during the skype conference and they have to ask each other yes no questions about each other's country in order to guess the country and here in order to guess where the uh, partner class comes from they need to uh just uh, learn all uh, to collect together all the knowledge uh, of history geography literature uh cultural studies whatever so everything they know uh but the questions have to be only yes no uh just simple questions and uh, after they guess each other's location they start speaking uh about uh, just uh, all the topics which they are interested in you know like usually what kids love to discuss school uh, hobbies sports music uh, favorite uh, dishes and uh, et cetera, holidays uh, festivals etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, 
before beginning like a uh, uh, natural conversation they just have to apply knowledge in order to guess where their friends come from and that is really uh, great because uh, this kind of game teaches uh, the students uh, that uh, actually all the knowledge that they get from school uh, that they get at the lessons uh, is really important it is really uh, used in real life in everyday life and it helps us to learn about people from all over the world and it's just a simple example which uh, shows them that they do know quite a lot and uh, that they can use, for example, uh, their maps, uh, their books from uh, the lessons of geography, uh, their uh, digital maps from the telephones, uh, which they can help them to locate uh, their partner school or whatever. So uh, they can communicate together as a class in order to figure out where their partners come from. Uh, so it teaches them quite a lot of skills, so like 21st century skills, collaboration, communication, uh, and uh, just uh, also gives them a chance to speak uh, in the natural way, to use uh, English as a foreign language and to use technology meaningfully. Right. Wonderful. Yeah, and that, that's a common one that we've heard from, from many Pen Pal schools teachers is uh, Skype and in particular mystery Skype. Uh, really great way for students to practice, you know, the, the verbal communication, the listening and speaking, a great complement to the reading and writing happening on Pen Pal schools. Now, uh, many teachers use Pen Pal schools as a way to find other teachers around the world to coordinate those mystery Skypes. We're not just connecting students, but connecting teachers as well. Um, Hanna, is there, how have you made a lot of your connections to do mystery Skype? Is it through Pen Pal? Or I know you also travel to a lot of conferences. What, what ways would you recommend for teachers that are looking to kind of uh, meet teachers around the world to start a, a mystery Skype? I find that the most, uh, the easiest probably way to connect with other teachers who uh, are also using similar projects is uh, following different uh, teachers groups in social media, like uh, Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, if you join the group, like Penpal Schools, for example, group of educators in, in uh, Facebook, uh, you can see a lot of interesting conversations going on and uh, people share the projects which uh, they uh, are running or maybe just ideas of the projects which they would like to start but still don't know how to start, how to, how to uh, approach this project. Or maybe they have got just the idea but don't know how to develop the stages of the project and uh, you can uh, just collaborate and uh, uh, not only use technology like skype uh, but uh, use whatever is uh, just uh, convenient for all of you uh, i also found quite uh, useful such uh, a tool as uh, sway for example microsoft sway uh, it's like a um, presentation but it's uh, online and uh, it gives you a possibility to embed all different uh, media like video, uh, photos, uh, writing, uh, Twitter chat, whatever. So uh, it's a great resource and it stays online and it's always there and you can add everything. You can collaborate on it with people from different countries. So uh, if you join such uh, teachers groups on social media, you will find a lot of like-minded educators with whom you can collaborate later. Excellent, yes. I, I was joking with a friend the other day that I think half of the tweets sent out every day are from teachers these days. So mm -hmm. Teachers are so active on, on Twitter. So if you're an educator and you're not on Twitter, uh, you're missing out. There's a lot of great activity with uh, teachers sharing resources and just supporting one another. So, um, and and uh, Hannah mentioned we have our Pen Pal Schools Facebook group, which all are welcome to join and a lot of great activity and discussions happening there. Um, how about you, Miguel? What what resources are are you using in addition to Pen Pal Schools to help make learning uh, English fun and authentic for your students? All right. So one of the things I we tend to do, um, since our internet connection is not very reliable, uh, we tend to do plenty of asynchronous activities. And in this case, we record videos. We have students record videos with their smartphones. And then they get to send it to me. I put them together. I put in a probably in a, a, a Google Drive folder, and then I share it with the teacher. And then they can uh, reply back with some more videos. Whenever we can, uh, we can we use Skype, and we also use Zoom uh, in order to have these synchronous meetings. Uh, but it's sometimes difficult because of the time zone. So we might need to find uh, you know um, a group of students who are 
you know, close to the same time zones we are because uh, our classes are usually in the afternoon. So whenever we, they are here, I mean, my students are here, uh, students in the US or somewhere else, they have already left school. So it's a bit difficult to, uh, to coordinate a, a synchronous meeting. So we do plenty of that and we use plenty of resources as well uh, in order to share uh, uh, information with, with other students. We also use uh, Adobe Spark so they can design their own uh, post for social media. They can design their own uh, kind of like websites uh, about the things that they have reflected on and they can also design videos. So we use plenty of extra tool in order to have the students produce what, what they're supposed to do at the end of each project. Um, so um, I would say that, and I find. Oh, no. of, uh, interest, usually uh, on Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter user, but I'm trying to get used to it uh, right now. Uh, because it's not, it's not quite popular in my country. We tend to use uh, Instagram and Facebook even more. So I usually find these features on Facebook groups and whenever I go to uh, local and national and even international TESOL conventions, I get to talk to as many teachers as I can about the projects. In fact, uh, I think it was uh, not this year, last year, I delivered a presentation on uh, TESOL International Convention and I had many people interested in joining and, and developing projects. So that is uh, the best way to, you know, find teachers with similar interests. Great. Well, thanks, Miguel, for sharing. And, and yeah, for anyone uh, following uh, and, and listening in who, who's concerned about the, the quality of your internet connection, not being able to do a, a Skype chat or mystery Skype, there are lots of great resources for just search for asynchronous communication, right? Um, and that's what we do at Pen Pal Schools. We don't want teachers to worry about time zones and logistics. So Pen Pal Schools is all asynchronous. But there's a whole lot that you can do, and and as Miguel was discussing, you know, sometimes that can be even better to let students put a little more thought and time into preparing what they want to share. Uh, if there's not the pressure of doing it, you know, in the moment, they have a little bit time to to prepare a little bit um, heftier of a, a project to share their learning. So awesome! Thanks for for sharing those resources. We've got one more of our own question, and then we'll take some questions from the audience. So um, if you do have a question for our panelists please write it in and you can use again that same hashtag English Connections. Um, let me share my screen for our last question. There we go. Question number three. Um, what tips or advice do you have for other English teachers who want to connect their students with native speakers? So anything maybe that you wish you knew uh, years ago, mistakes that you've made that you've learned from, any advice that you've got. Um, again, everyone feel free to weigh in with the hashtag English Connections. And while they're answering, please um, write in any questions that you've got, again, using that hashtag. Um, so uh, Miguel, Ana, uh, question, um, any tips or advice that you'd like to share for those, uh, for the audience in terms of helping students to connect with native speakers or just and maybe some things that you've learned along the way in general? Well, uh, I uh, probably want to share not maybe just tip or advice, but a reflection on one of my very first project with uh, experiences with Penpal schools. Uh, it was several years ago and uh, I had a student in my classroom who uh, really struggled with his English and uh, uh, he, uh, especially with his writing, he had um, problems putting his thoughts in writing uh, and uh, uh, he was very, very shy at the lessons, never volunteered to speak uh, because he was not sure of his uh, level of English and uh, uh, he was afraid to fail. Uh, however, he was very good at technology uh, and uh, he really loved uh, chatting with uh, friends online uh, using the computer. When I uh, got him into a project uh, on Penpal schools, he uh, wrote uh, the first reflections uh, in the chat uh, to his pen pal. Uh, though he had uh, some mistakes in his sentences, uh, whenever I uh, looked at uh, his response, I decided not to correct everything, but to uh, let it be like it was. Because 
while reading his sentences, even though they uh, contained some mistakes, you could understand the general idea of what he was trying to say. And uh, I just let it be like it was. He sent his message to his uh, pen pal, and he was really amazed that his pen pal understood his idea and answered him, uh, just supporting his thought. Then this guy who had uh, really uh, problems with English, who was struggling, he became so happy that uh, the person in the other country, on the other part of the world, understood what he was trying to convey, and understood his thoughts, and he became more motivated to learn English because he understood the real purpose of it, that knowing a foreign language, uh, you can express your thoughts, express your ideas, communicate with somebody else uh, on uh, the other side of the world. And uh, he was actually the first to complete all the tasks in the project. Uh, and uh, he, though he did not get the highest marks, for example, for his grammar and accuracy and uh, uh, vocabulary, but he, he was so happy to uh, be the first one, uh, the first finisher. And I was really glad that I did not overcorrect him. And that is probably my uh, tip. And uh, Miguel was talking about it also uh, earlier today that be very careful while uh, correcting students' work. Uh, maybe let them make mistakes sometimes because they need to understand that uh, whenever you make mistakes, the most important idea is the most important thing is that you are able to express yourself and we learn from our mistakes. And uh, uh, if you are able to express yourself, this is the most uh, valuable idea. And I should tell you also that after finishing this project successfully, uh, this student uh, really improved his academic result in English and uh, his grade for the next semester was two points higher than uh, the grade for the first semester when uh, he did not participate in pencil schools yet. So I could see it uh, actually that he, he became more active, he became more careful while uh, uh, handing in his uh, home assignments, he uh, became more careful while doing his exercises. Uh, so that really motivated him to be more diligent while working at regular lessons. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that story. And, and uh, what a wonderful lesson for, for everyone following along at home. Let, let your students make some mistakes, right? And that's, that's where the learning happens. And oh man, it's just awesome to hear that that, that student and, and many of your students have had that success. And, and thank you for being such an amazing educator to, to take a resource like Pen Pal Schools and, and make the most of it. Let your students really use it and get on there and make mistakes and not overcorrect. So it's it's thanks to teachers like you why our, our program's been successful. So awesome story, awesome lesson for our audience. Um, Miguel, how are you gonna follow that one? Uh, what, what, uh, what, what tips or advice do you have for, uh, for those following at home? Oh. You scared him off. It was so good that he, he suddenly realized that his advice was not good enough. No, um, I'm, I'm sure his internet connection is giving him a little bit of trouble. Uh, hopefully he'll be able to join back in. Um, in the meantime, uh, there we go. He's coming back. Um, Miguel, can you hear us okay? It looks like you're, you're still getting connected. I just see your, your, your very dapper photo so far. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you are. Miguel, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you very well. Okay, we thought you chickened out and you didn't want to follow, follow <laughs> no, Hannah no, and no. her answer. It was um, my internet connection. Um, um, yeah, so over to you, Miguel. And any tips or advice and lessons learned along the way, mistakes that you've made uh, that, that you'd like to share with our audience? Well, I think that um, even though it is, as I said before, something that the students enjoy doing and it's fun to do, it requires preparation. So I would say that as a teacher, uh, leading these projects, you need to yeah, do your own lesson planning and uh, make sure that, that there is a, a goal at the end of it. They produce something at the end of it and they feel, uh, you know, there is like, like, a, like a, yeah, there is a goal at, at the end of the project. Like I can do this. I was able to communicate. I was able to write. I was able, I was able to understand what um, uh, the material uh, expressed in, in the whole project. And uh, yeah, I would say work as well a little bit offline before they go on to the online setting. Uh, something else I would also advise other teachers is to uh, do like a, a diagnosis at, at the beginning uh, on, on the digital skills that students have. Because 
we know that they, they are the digital generation and they are on Instagram, they are on every single social media. But when it comes to something academic, they somehow don't understand how to do things. So I will say like an introduction on how to write messages, uh, how to reply to messages, um, yeah, how to use it, the entire platform first before jumping onto developing a project. Right, yeah, great tip. A little preparation goes a long way. And, and that is a common mistake that we hear from a lot of educators is, you know, you hear this term uh, digital native, right? And yeah. so people assume that the younger generation, they're so comfortable with technology that we can just throw them on there and they'll figure it out. Yeah. And that's not the case. And in fact, they can form unhealthy habits, right? And, mm -hmm. and sometimes we see the quality of writing is so poor because they're used to maybe shorthand and texting and things that, mm -hmm. that might work on a text message, but doesn't have a place yeah. if you're learning more academic writing or professional writing, um, which, which we try to inspire in pen pal school. So yeah, a little preparation, both from, from the teacher side of things, going in, understanding how the resource works for yourself, mm -hmm. and then taking some time to make sure that students are comfortable uh, certainly, I think, are a really valuable tip, and, and thanks for sharing that one with our audience. All right. So now it's time for, for some questions from the audience. So let me see what we've got here. Um, all right, so uh, the first question here we have is, um, uh, do you involve parents? So how do you help parents to support their students? Um, so I'll give you guys a minute to think about maybe some examples you have of uh, parents and how they're involved and how you can leverage them as a resource to help to engage your students. Um, while you think about that or while you answer, I'm just going to um, pull up um, just a, a slide here to show people the uh, full map of all the schools around the world that are participating in Pen Pal schools can you, so you can kind of um, get a sense for all the places you can connect with and be a part of our program. Um, but if, if uh, Miguel or Hannah, if either of you have a, an answer ready, um, talking about um, how uh, how you use parents and get parents involved. I think that's a, a great question um, to touch on. Well, yeah, I can actually start here. And uh, uh, the great example was just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this year, I uh, started working with the fifth form. Uh, this class uh, did not know me as a teacher before. Uh, we met only in September at the beginning of the school year. And uh, uh, it was their first year in middle school because middle school starts in uh, fifth form in Ukraine. And uh, uh, I uh, tried to involve them in several uh, global projects. Uh, and uh, of course, when kids uh, learn something new, not only from the books, but from real world, when you try to take learning outside the classroom, it is always uh, a new kind of experience for them. And uh, when they come home, they share everything with their parents. So the parents are aware of everything. And in the fifth form, especially because this is the period, period when they move from uh, primary school to uh, middle school, uh, parents are really concerned. They want uh, their kids to be uh, really happy to uh, pass this adaptation period from uh, uh, primary school to middle school. And uh, uh, the kids were involved in several global projects. And at the end of the year, a couple of weeks ago, I got a wonderful present from the parents of these kids. Uh, they uh, listened to their, to their children talking about global projects and uh, about how happy they were and uh, how much uh, experience they gained from being involved to global projects that they designed and actually made uh, for me, for my classroom, a globe made of wood, a wooden globe with a piece uh, dove on top. And it was a symbol and a motivator, as they said, uh, not to stop and to continue uh, for me as a teacher to involve them into uh, global projects next year uh, when they move to the sixth form. So it shows that uh, this idea of involving uh, kids in global projects is really meaningful for parents and parents do understand that uh, it is important for their children no matter how young they are to develop uh, global competency to uh, be able to accept differences to understand that uh, people uh, where wherever they live in what countries they live uh, they still have quite a lot in common and we have a lot to share and uh, it's really great learning about each other's cultures, traditions, and uh, being able to share your culture as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's that's awesome to hear, and mm -hmm. and that's something that that we all also hear a lot from a lot of our educators is that you know, schools everywhere are looking to get parents more involved, and that can be a real challenge. Um, and you know, parents are busy, and we understand that, but. We, we have found that what they do care to learn about when their kids are connecting with other kids from around the world, that's something that gets their interest. They wanna know, you know, where are you connecting with? What types of things are you doing? That's compelling, that's engaging in a way to, to draw the parent in, not only for that one experience, but hopefully to then take more interest in what's going on in, in the day-to-day -day activity. So um, thanks for sharing that story. Miguel, anything to add on, on, on how you've engaged parents? Yeah, sure. Um, well, we try to involve parents indirectly somehow because not only as i said before not only do they work on the um on offline activities and the online things that need to be on mm -hmm. schools but they also have like a take home activity so in, in case of uh talking about immigration they could talk to you know uh I mean, when, when you when they are learning about the projects, it's not only about learning about somebody else's culture, but also trying to uh, exteriorize or, or uh, have our own culture known to everybody else. So what a better way uh, to consolidate that knowledge, because they may have some knowledge about their, their own culture, uh, but what a better way to do so than asking parents or asking grandparents in terms of, let's say, uh, talking about uh, local food. So... Uh, I also ask, ask students to ask their parents or grandparents what kind of food is local from, from, from Venezuela or from uh, our city, so they can also communicate that to, the, uh, to their pimples uh, abroad. So I think that uh, somehow they're indirectly uh, involved in the projects because they mm -hmm. do, I mean, students really care about knowing about it and they ask uh, many people to give them ideas on what to do. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a. I think it's a, like a community project. So it's not only the students, it's not only the teachers, but also uh, the family is involved. Great. Yeah. So the, the parents aren't just the audience, but they're the experts that are they're helping the pen pals, uh, your students, to create the project, and then of course they'll they'll see their expertise in the project when it's all done. So they're involved every step of the way. Um, cool. Well, awesome. Really, really good um, tips for getting parents involved. Um, we've got one more question, time, time for to answer that one. This one, I think, a, a quick and fun one, which asks, um, where have you connected with? So what countries have you connected with? And this would have been a much more natural time for me to pull up the map. I should have just waited. It was right there. But, um, but go ahead and share um, which, which countries that you've connected with uh, uh, around the world. Huh. I even don't know. Uh, it wouldn't be enough for me. Uh, the remaining time wouldn't be enough for me to mention all the countries we have connected. Um, when I spoke at uh, the Global Education and Skills Forum uh, last year, uh, I also spoke about uh, using technology to connect uh, uh, children from different countries. And I prepared a slide where there was uh, the map of the world and uh, my country in, uh, in the center and uh, uh, little arrows, uh, lines, uh, to uh, point into different countries with which we connected. And it was like a web because uh, we connected with so many countries, not only through Penpal schools, but through uh, all other great uh, educational uh, projects, which um, just provide you an opportunity to uh, take learning outside the classroom, uh, to uh, connect your students worldwide. Uh, probably uh, I can name just a few, uh, the USA, Canada, um, Argentina, uh, Lots of countries from Europe, France, Great Britain, Poland, uh, then probably uh, India is very active in global connections, Pakistan, um, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, what else? Uh, that is just a few, uh, Moldova, uh, which is not far from us. So this is, uh, these are the countries which I can remember right now. Uh, right. And there are more and more countries, of course, uh, a lot more countries which we have already connected. Yeah. Perhaps the world's most connected teacher, Anna Dudic. Um, and how, about, how about you, Miguel? Don't, don't be shy if it's not quite Anna's list. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, so, so there are not as many as, as Anna's. But yeah, uh, Japan, I, I can recall Japan, I can recall France, um, US, of course, uh, and Argentina, and also Brazil as well. Um, 
Yeah, just to name a few. I mean, I guess there are many more, but at the moment I don't remember yeah. all of them. But yeah, it's been amazing, you know, um, the way they, even though having different languages, they can communicate their ideas in English in this case. Yes. Wonderful. And for those uh, who, who do want to connect with as many countries as possible, um, got, got really good news in terms of how we've structured pen pal schools to get more global connections for you. So now I'm going to go back to that map at a much, much better time. Um, and the way that our program works is you don't just pick, say, one partner school and connect with that school. When you join pen pal schools, you're instantly connected with thousands around the world. So um, even though the name pen pal suggests maybe like one to one letter writing, it's more of uh, student forums where students, we see students writing answers and if it's a good answer where they put a lot of thought and effort, they'll get uh, responses to that one answer from hundreds of pen pals in dozens of countries around the world. And you don't need to worry about finding those classrooms. You don't need to worry about arranging the connection they're there waiting for you now. Um, thousands of students active every day on pen pal schools from dozens of countries, again, in, in any topic that you choose. So if you choose, say, the immigration topic, which um, I think everyone here has done, um, or walking to freedom, flags of the world, within every topic, there's thousands of students or sometimes hundreds um, active in a single day, ready and waiting for your students, ready to communicate. So. Um, those global connections are waiting for you. And again, if you were interested in joining Pen Pal Schools and want to be a part of it, um, you're in luck. Everyone who joined the webinar today, uh, you're going to get an, a really great discount on the license for the school. Just go to this website, penpalschools.com slash English, um, and you'll find there a form where, where you can fill out and get that discount and bring global connections um, to your school. So um, we're about out of time. Uh, so thank you again so much uh, to Hanna, to Miguel, to Flavia, who's dealing with uh, a bunch of screaming Uruguayan students right now. Um, really appreciate your time and, and sharing your, your knowledge and your experience. Um, always a pleasure to hear from you guys and the amazing work that you're doing. So, so thank you again for being fantastic Pen Pal Schools ambassadors. And thank you first and foremost for being amazing educators and doing everything that, that you are for your students. Thank, Thank you. you that was a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, bye everyone. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.